Hi, Tefal Dude here. Now today I want to show you how to install Windows 11 on your Mac operating system. Now why would you want to do that, you ask? Well, to quote the words of the great George Mallory, the explorer, when he was asked, why do you want to climb Mount Everest? He said, because it's there. And that's why we're going to install Windows 11 on a Mac, because it's there. And more importantly, because we can. Now, if you try to install Mac on a Windows, it's basically a nightmare and doesn't work properly. However, the other way around works perfectly. Now, obviously, the advantage of doing this is if you were to look at my YouTube channel and see many of the videos I've made, some of them don't quite work on a Mac. For instance, these last two PDFs I advertised to show you how they work for students. Well, you might think I can't use it because I'm on a Mac. Well, now you can. So here is the PDF annotator that you can use and PDF exchange, and they're really good, powerful pieces of software. So without further ado, let's start by installing Windows on your Mac. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is to download a thing called UTM. So click here to download it. Don't go to the Mac store because, you know, they might make you pay for it. Whereas here it is actually for free. And you can see it's downloading here. And then I'll go to my downloads folder and there it is. So let's install this first. Drag it into the applications, close that off, go to the applications, and you can see the app there. Now we don't need to run it just yet. First, what we need to do is go to the gallery so that you can choose what you want to install on your Mac. And we want Windows 11, but equally, you could have the other Windows as well. Now we need to go to the guide and here simply get crystal fetch and this you can get from the app store for free. So here I'm going to click download and we're going to open it because this is what's going to help us, as it says, fetch the ISO. Windows 11, Apple Silicon. Now I have the M2 Mac, and obviously if you have N Intel, you can use the other um, pointer. So English is what I want, but you can have it any language. And Windows 11. And now we're going to download, and this will take about five or 10 minutes. Click on accept, and then just Sit back and wait for it to download. And I'm going to pause this until it's finished downloading. And it should take just a few minutes as I do have fast internet. And then I'll show you the next steps. Now it's just coming to the end of it and then it will do something else. So now it's just archiving the file. And you can see the percentage going up really quickly. And now we're on 90% and it will finish soon. And there you have it. It has been downloaded to our documents folder. So you don't need to click on move. You can just delete this. Well, we'll click on move, but it doesn't matter. We simply exit here. Exit this and this and go to our downloads folder, or should I say our document folder. And there you can see the four gigabyte file that we're going to use. Now, what we need to do is open up UTM. Click open. And this is where we're going to put this ISO file. 
So create a new virtual machine and click virtualize. We want Windows. Keep everything as it is. The only thing you have to do is browse for the ISO file. You go to documents, here's the file and open. And now click continue. I'll have four megabytes of RAM. I've got eight in total, but I'm only going to use two cores. It doesn't really require that many cores to run Windows. So I'll continue. Now you can leave this at 64, but I'm going to increase it to 80 and click continue. Now, this is important because later you want to bring in some items, some folders, some documents, things to install, and you need to have a share folder. So I'm going to share both my document folder, click open, and you can see the path document, and also my downloads folder. Uh, I don't know if it only allows me to share one. So let's go back and click the documents folder. I wonder if I can share two. No, I'll click the documents folder and continue. Again, just click save. And that's it done. All we have to do now is install it. And the first time you have to click a letter or something. Press any key to boot from CD. So you have to quickly click a key. If you don't, it will just circle again and you will have to do it. But that's the only time we click the key. The next time it does that, we ignore it. Okay. So there's my language currency. Now we don't have a product key. In fact, you don't need one because I believe you can use Windows 11 indefinitely, even without a product key, and it's legal to do so. Okay, we said 80 gigabyte, yes. Now this will take some time to do, so I'll pause, let it do its thing, and then we'll come back. Okay, now this time when it restarts, we do not touch any of the keys. Don't touch anything. Let it reboot itself. So as you can see, it's installing the operating system. That's why we didn't touch any of the keys. Once again, we don't touch any keys. We let it reboot itself. And it's finishing off the installation. And there she blows. So we'll just click yes and yes, skip, and simply give it a name. I'll call it Bob. And you can enter a password, but I don't want to this time. You can always do that later. Now this may take a while, but this actually installs a lot faster on this virtual Mac or this virtual window in a Mac than it does on an actual real PC. So I'm quite amazed by the speed in which you can get Windows 11 up and running. Ta-da! And there you have it. Look at that. How wonderful is that? 
Now, just to make sure that you're able to um, get the right picture size, that it's not too large, we will have to install one more thing that is within the system itself. So let's find our hard drive in Windows, go to my PC, and if you go to, I think it's the D drive, let me have a look, or one of these drives, E or D. I've got a feeling it might be E. Uh, no, it's not that. See, that's the E drive. That is the hard drive that we need to be getting rid of. So actually, what we should do is, let's just close this out and open it again. So click on the window here and shut down this computer. Not the computer, sorry, shutting down the windows. And actually close it out and even close this out, the UTM. Close everything. Here you can see Crystal Fletch. Make sure you quit that. Everything's been quitted. Now open UTM again. Click on the window. But this time, scroll down because we have to get rid of this. Uh, ISO file. So go here and click clear. That done, we can now go back into Windows. And this time you won't be asked to press any key because we removed that file. So here's Bob, that's me. You'll notice it's not that clear. So in order to fix that, let's go into, as I mentioned, let's go into the hard drive. This is the UTM area. So if I go back, this drive here, UTM, and you have to install the UTM guest tools, and that will allow us to make the size of the screen more neat and tidy. So we'll click next. If for some reason this tries to install while you in the last process, which it did with me, don't let it install. And if it, if it blocks, if it comes to a block, then just, you know, um, Close everything off, reopen the window as it were. So I'm going to go next, agree. It happened to me last time, it was trying to run this. It got halfway and it just froze. If that happens to you, close all the windows and just in open it up again. So don't worry about that. I was hoping it happened to me this time because it happened to me last time. It got to this stage and it just kind of froze here for about 10 minutes. And I thought, well, not having that. So I just closed everything, opened it again, and it worked perfectly. And as you can see, it's going to work perfectly now. But seriously, if you, if you find yourself waiting 10 or 15 minutes and nothing's moving, close everything, start again. So we're going to reboot now. See, I'm trying to reboot and it's kind of frozen. So you think, well, what's going on here? Well, it's just plain silly buggers if you ask me. So we'll just click the tabs. No, nothing. Yeah, it's plain silly buggers. So all we have to do is just uh, close it off and close it out here. And we'll just start again. So this is just to remind you that glitches do happen, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't use the software. It does work the second time around. So I'm going to click on here and go to this PC. And there you can see our root. Remember, I said we were going to use the, what was it, the documents folder. And there you can see the documents which we can then put on our desktop or wherever. 
So for now, let's go back to this PC and see if I can run that guest tool again. Okay, so it's running it again, and this time it should finish it. And there you go. And now I can reboot. See? So don't worry if little glitches happen, you have to do something twice. That's like most software. You, you just have to not give up. And you can see already the name Bob is a lot sharper. The welcome is sharper. And if I right click on here, in order to personalize, I want to see what kind of settings we have. Let's go to the display settings. So the display settings are 10 by 7. Can we do higher? I think it all depends on the size of the screen. So if I went to this one, it changes. I think it determines. So look, this is a larger screen. If I was to make it smaller, look at the size here, 1496. If I was to grab this corner, and make it smaller like this, it still stays at 1496. Whatever, it's Windows. Obviously, if you want to, use it full screen now, just click on the green icon here. And now it looks like I'm using Windows full screen. So let's click on here again. PC, I can go to my folder. I can drag out a document of this, uh, let's say a cutting edge document I wanted. So you need to put everything in the document folder in order to share it with this uh, document, unless you've got Google Drive or something like that. And then we can open up this book, and there it is in the uh, Edge browser. So I'll just close that off, close that off. And so there you have it. Obviously, if you click activation, you can see that Windows is not activated. You can see that Windows is not activated. And it doesn't matter. It's not like in the past where it gave you 30 days. Here, you can use it indefinitely. So, in, all it is is you cannot change the pictures or some colors, but you can use the software and anything you put on it, games, etc., to your heart's content. So. I hope you've enjoyed the installation of Windows and check out my new videos, which will be all about the Mac Mini and how I actually open up my Mac Mini on my iPad and other um, videos I'll be talking about as to why I actually bought a Mac Mini and why you should. So until the next video, give this a like and a thumbs up and I hope to see you on the next video. Hey.